Glance at the uh, CGB curve, I look at the long end, of course, just coming up a little bit in terms of yield, and but, but still remaining strong and low, perhaps even lower for even longer. We're hearing right now, and there's a, a briefing taking place out of the NDRC, that's a National uh, Development and Reform uh, Commissioner Council. In any case, of course, Koja um, Fajan, Wei and Hui, to be more exact, there in Mandarin. We're hearing uh, the Vice Finance Minister also speaking. So, uh, effectively, we're looking at public revenue, negative 2.4%, uh, general public spending. And this really goes into certainly this conversation we're about to have on where they plan to tap the bond markets for those ultra long bonds uh, up 6.7 percent year and year there we go out of the NDRC okay yeah. uh, let's talk about those ultra long bonds as well and bring in our Asia economics and government editor Jill Deesis here mm -hmm. on how they plan to sell them that certainly impacts sentiment overall too yes so this is I think a topic of a lot of discussion right now remember these ultra long uh, sovereign bonds we've really only seen about four or this is I think the fourth set sale in the last 26 years and so there's a lot of interest in figuring out where exactly are these going to be sold in the public market private market so the latest we're hearing is that um, uh, China is looking to sell these actually on the public market I think that the, the issue there is that um, there's a higher risk for some liquidity pressure because of course if you're selling things to a broader audience there in the public market um, that means banks are going to have to set aside um, more cash uh, to actually make some of those sales happen and so that kind of limits the amount of liquidity that's sloshing around in the market there. Um, I think um, at this point it's just it's it's all really interesting because look again these sales aren't incredibly uh, common uh, we're very interested in what kind of fiscal stimulus we're actually expecting out of China this year this is really the big um, you know kind of the big more interesting bit of all of this so far I mean are these are these going to be used to fund infrastructure projects as we've often seen these types of debt sales um, guided toward before it sounds like there's still a little bit of a debate over where exactly these projects are which kinds of projects are actually going to be so yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but yeah, lots of debate here. And lots of waiting, it, yes. it, it seems, might be, <laughs> might be prescribed at this moment. So the Bank of America actually released their fund manager survey yesterday. We're going to show that graphic on our screen. So investors are waiting for more stimulus. The percentage of that group waiting for more increased month and month. And it does seem, based on some of state media reports, these guys will have to wait even further. Yes, I think uh, the latest we've heard out of uh, state uh, media, including the Securities Times, is essentially that um, it, it seems policymakers might be entering a sort of wait and see period. We just had all of this economic data out of the first couple of months of the year. Obviously, a bit of a noisy period because uh, you're, you're looking at a period that captures the Lunar New Year holiday. Um, but that data was overall surprised to the upside. I mean, we saw a big uptick in um, industrial output. We saw um, you know some, some positive investment figures there. Um, we um, did see, I think, consumption overall was um, maybe not as strong as you would have liked, but still actually, um, you know, did grow in the first couple of months of the year. And so if you're, uh, you know, Chinese policymakers right now, you're looking at that and saying, actually, the economy is doing pretty well. Um, you know, there's still, I think, a lot of questions over whether it's enough to hit that growth target of around 5% for this year, which, of course, is going to be a bit more difficult to manage because of a, a less favorable base of comparison. But it might just be that you know when you you're dealing with the triple R cut that was handed down last month you've also saw some of those trims to the loan prime rates um, maybe we actually just see how all of this transmits into the economy before we see even more so yes I think wait and see mm. seems to be the game that they're playing right now yeah Jill thank you so much Jill Desis there our Asia Econo economics and government editor we may have spoke too soon because as Jill was saying <laughs> it's wait and see the deputy governor of the PBOC he's speaking right now actually talking about there is room for the triple R to decline, I guess stating the situation more than and policy intention more than actual action. But yeah, I mean, we are we know what we're waiting for. It's certainly what when that actually comes. Yeah, they have ample monetary policy room. They have the room doesn't mean that they're going to do it though, yeah. right? That certainly is the nuance there. Yeah. We're back with an it's a nip head of fixed income research mm -hmm. for Asia at UBP. Yeah, I mean, should we? count on having more stimulus or at least on the monetary side this year well, China? Well, um, they are setting the target of GDP to be 5%. Um, they would definitely, you know, try to make sure that there would be enough stimulus, you know, for the economy. In particular, I think, you know, for the property market, you know, they would try to have different tools to support it. Um, in general, you know, even though we still, you know, sort of like cautious about the sector, I mean, in particular for the dollar bond for the Chinese property space, the main reason would be we need to see that the contractor sales to really 
really stable and you know to go up slightly or you know steadily going up before we really think that um, you know problem will be solved. So it's it's you know still a cautious stage, mm. um, but it doesn't mean that you know um, there's nothing interesting in the Chinese credit in the dollar space. We still like the Chinese tag, um, some of the tech names, TMT names, because they are cash rich in you know high IG credits, mm. um, which you know will be good for carry play as well. I think most important right now would be people need to lock in the yield. No matter it's DM credit, Asia credit, I think you know for Chinese credit, China tech name you know would be one of the things that they can also. What look about in. geopolitical tensions, though? Should I worry about well, definitely, that? Well, definitely, definitely, that would create volatility um, for these names. So perhaps the only way to do it would be park your money below five years, which would try to avoid volatility there. Okay, but apart from Chinese tech. I know Macau, for example, has come up. Uh, and to, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of tired talking about Macau credit, but it seems to be a well, part of the maybe market. Maybe take your pick, Anitza. I mean, when you have CGBs that are close to record lows and yields, yeah. you have LGOVs, which we were talking about yesterday at the China Credit Forum, yeah. that are still showing quite a bit of resilience. Mm. I mean, what, where do you choose, right? Do you, do you focus on the sovereigns? Do you focus on LGFEs or even more in the credit space? Well, given like what the rates environment and the credit environment, I would put on, emphasis on quality credit. So that means, you know, I would go for that really quality, high yeah. IG names. Um, LGRV sometimes, you know, it would be difficult really to go, go through their financials sometimes. Okay, we need to study a lot on the LGRV. Yeah. Um, so we also would, you know, look at some of the SOE, um, those strategically important ones. So I guess, you know, there's choices for us, yeah. um, but we need to be selective. Okay, and just your broad view in the CGB rally. How much more do you think? It doesn't look like a yield play at these levels already. No, not yeah. really. Yeah. Um, it really depending on, you know, um, the government, you know, policy on the LPR as well as, you know, how they all just mentioned about like cutting of the triple R, right? So right. I think all these will, up, will affect the CGB yield. Mm. So there could be some space for them, you know, to go lower from here. What's the mood in the offshore bond market overall? You talked about tech. You we mean can't, the, we, yeah. US dollar um, Chinese credit, yes, right? Yeah. Um, it's still, I think, majority of the investor um, are from the Chinese space. Okay. Um, they are, you know, well supported by um, Chinese investor. Mm. Um, liquidity wise, it's still sort of like, you know, average, I would say, because I think depending on the credit, as I said, SOE tech names that would be, you know, good supporter even from foreign investor as well. Um, but if you are talking about really local LGRV, um, not too many people, you know, um, sort of have a lot of information about the credit. Yeah. So that's why I think you know, people would still prefer those that um, with IG credit rated or SOD. Hong Kong corporates, you're saying? You're, you're looking at too oh, the definitely. IG space? I mean, you know, since the beginning of the year, we've seen some rally on some of the Hong Kong IG credits as well. Um, people worry about the interbank funding market that they are, you know, um, um, they are used to have, get their right. loan. But I think even Fed is saying that they're going to cut rate, so we reckon the interbank market in Hong Kong dollar would also sort of, you know, reduce in the pressure. Mm -hmm. So we feel comfortable with that. But again, you know, we just look at the IG names, yeah. those bigger ones. Right. Have any of the, the measures that were announced during the Hong Kong budget to ease the, the problems in the property market, has mm -hmm. that has that? Oh, it, ha it helps it a lot, okay. I would say. It helps a lot in terms of the sentiment for these credits. Right. In particular, um, China also put up, you know, different measures on the property space, right? Mm. So Hong Kong corporate, some of them have projects in China. Mm. So together with the um, measures made by the um, Hong Kong government, it help, helps a lot, you know, on the credit. What are yields there doing? Uh, for the Hong Kong credit? Hong Kong corporates, yeah. Um, talk about Investment like grade. Three, five years, um, at the moment around 5.7%. Mm. Um, so it's, it's not bad, I would say, because um, most of them are, you know, also have very strong fundamental in terms of IG credit.